welcome back, Love Stylers. I'm Misty. Today, I have a great show for you. Three diet hacks for those of us over 40. And if you're under 40 and you've never been fat, click off right now. You can stay. You seem mature enough to handle what we're gonna talk about today. And if you're leaving, make sure to like, share, and subscribe before you leave. With my busy lifestyle of being a struggling artist and having a nine to five blue collar job as I do, I try to live a very healthy lifestyle and it's been working for me since I went to low carb keto then to carnivore. And I've given up alcohol altogether and this diet has helped me so much. I've given up my food addiction. I've also cured my high blood pressure. I'm no longer on meds for high blood pressure. I've lost 55 pounds and I've kept it off for the past few years. Something that we struggle with when we're older is keeping it off. When I was 35, 30, 25, 20 years old, I didn't have to worry about these things quite as much. When you're 40 years old or over, like I'm 50, and I feel like we've learned a thing or two over the years. We work smarter, not harder at our age. It is your birthright to be healthy, fit, and happy, and be able to have the energy levels, the hormone balance, and the focus that you might have had when you were younger. My first hack today for the over 40 crowd to make things easier in your life when you're dieting is to implement intermittent fasting. Now, I know it seems super obvious, Misty, like Captain Obvious. It is the number one secret that people who lose weight and start to get healthy have usually implemented. So intermittent fasting, if you've never heard of it before, is eating in a short window in a small area within a long day to eat food, where in the rest of the time you are fasting and not consuming any food. Now, fasting scares a lot of people, but I'm going to tell you it is like a muscle that you have to tone up and practice a little bit. So the first tip with intermittent fasting, if you've never tried it before, is to stop eating at a certain time every evening. So I'll give you an example. Andrew and I stopped eating at 6 p.m. lately. Now that has not always been the case. And I've been intermittent fasting, guys, for five years. My fasting muscle is strong. Now I just have to work on my physical muscles getting more strength. But intermittent fasting is not as hard as it sounds. If you find it hard to stop eating at 6 p.m. like I do, you don't have to do what I do, but you can do what you are comfortable with and maybe stop eating at seven or maybe make sure you stop eating at eight just to start. And when I first started on a low carb diet five years ago, I remember trying to not eat beyond 8 p.m. So that is a great place to start if you've never done this before. So lately, I eat one meal a day between four o'clock and six o'clock p.m. I can eat in between that two hour window. Now, after that, I do not consume anything between 6 p.m. and 4 p.m. the next day. Now that's a little more extreme and that is called OMAD, one meal a day, O-M-A-D. Now that's a little harder for most people. So the snacking in between meals is the part that a lot of people think is a little bit tricky if they're used to eating six times a day, for example, meaning they have breakfast and then they have a mid-morning snack, they have lunch, that's already three meals right there. And then they have a snack in between lunch and dinner. That's four. Dinner makes five. And then they have a, a nighttime snack, which makes six times a day. That is the average. So skipping the in-betweens is a great place to begin. And just having three meals a day, for example, is very, very doable without the snacks in between. So you might eat from 12 to 8 p.m. And that is a great place to start if you're looking for a hack 
with the intermittent fasting. I bumped into somebody the other day at work, a friend of mine, and I asked, how did you lose weight so quickly from the last time I had seen them? It had only been about three weeks. And they said, I've been intermittent fasting. Now, I don't even think this person was going very, very strict, but they closed and shortened their eating window and did not include the snacks in between meals. And that alone will get you so much further. Some people find it's easier to include coffee if they're skipping the snacks in between when they're first starting to intermittent fast because it's a little bit tricky when your body is getting adjusted to this way of eating. Consuming low carb foods or at least very healthy foods is going to help you that much faster. And I do recommend including pink salt in your diet. Adding a little bit more salt is very, very helpful. My second diet hack for those of us over 40 especially, or anybody, is to find substitutes. And by substitutes, I mean keto recipes, which are low carb versions. They're all over the internet. They saved my butt on my journey in the last few years because I found substitutes for the real foods that I like eating. For example, pizza, chicken crust pizza, check out Keto Connect. There's tons of other great channels that do a lot of recipes. Where there's a keto version and a low carb version and even carnivore versions of substitutions for the real foods we love. I was talking to Andrew last night and I said, what do you think are the most popular dishes in America that we go to first? Burgers, wings, pizza, and ice cream is what we came up with for the most popular foods that people gravitate towards. Oh, and also, I think I forgot one. What about chicken tenders? They're like my fave. Yeah, I really love chicken tenders. I've been eating them my entire life. They're my favorite. No, they're my favorite. My favorite. My favorite. Which coincidentally, I made chicken tenders last night with zero flour. I just used seasoning, some egg, and baking powder. And it served as a breading. And it was great, guys. I'm telling you, it was like Chick-fil-A in my house last night. I even made some low carb sauces to dip them in, a buffalo, sour cream, mayo. I used the Chosen Foods avocado mayonnaise to add to the sour cream and I made some dipping sauces to make it more fun. So it was a substitute and you can make like a chicken crust pizza. I've done a fathead crust pizza and you guys probably already know about this stuff but it's so amazing and so fun when you start to figure out that you're really not gonna miss out on your favorite foods. Now, is it 100% like the crappy version, the unhealthy version? No, but it's close enough to get the job done. If it wasn't for those recipes, I don't think I would've stayed on keto. And then I wouldn't have made my way to carnivore where I am so happy right now. And there's even a lot of carnivore recipes like chaffles, Maybe I'll throw up a thumbnail here so you can see that I have a chaffle video. It's just cheese and egg, and I make hamburger buns and everything with this, and it has saved my butt so many times. There are so many reasons why we have to find substitutes for regular foods, because the most important is we don't want sugar in our life anymore. There are so many hidden sugars in so many packaged foods. So when I say substitutes, a lot of times I mean for the packaged foods that we maybe grew up with on the standard American diet. Like I know I did, like potato chips and things like that. You have to pick up new substitutes like pork rinds, for example. Ketchup is a big staple for Americans and mayonnaise. And there are healthy versions of both of these now. Now I love Primal Kitchen and chosen foods. Check out both of those and you will see it costs a little bit more, but it is worth it. And I've had no reactions to these substitutes. Of course, we're getting rid of diet soda and regular soda. 
I know, it's so obvious. I shouldn't even have to say it. You can say no shit Misty in the comments and I won't even get that mad. So most foods today that we consume are packaged and processed. As you know, they include sugar, a lot of sugar, and things that don't even taste sweet. There are a lot of hidden sugars in foods that you would never ever expect. There are terrible oils that jack up our gut and give us leaky gut, which causes inflammation and makes us become overweight and unhealthy. There are also flowers, emulsifiers, things to get things to stick together. And they are on the list of terrible things for our body. And they're in so many things, almost everything. Gluten, MSG, and so many other things that they add to foods to keep them on the shelf forever. So these are the things I'm talking about, mostly things in a package. They're the worst, get them out of your life, get them out of your house. You know, these things are in our environment. We may have children, we may have people in the family that are not on a low carb diet. So therefore, people are eating things around you. You may be at work and there's food around you, guys, and you can't control this kind of thing. One thing about food is it's a necessity. And I have to thank my friend Kim, hey Kim, for bringing this to my attention. You know, food is a necessity. And if you have a food addiction, and there's food around you all the time that you're trying not to consume. It is really, really tough. You know, with me, I was an alcoholic and I'm addicted to alcohol. So I just got it out of my life and I didn't hang out where there was a lot of alcohol around me and that made it a lot easier. But with food, we don't have that option. You know, everybody is eating around us constantly, several times a day, whether it's three times a day, six times a day, all the people you run into, someone's always eating. Are they always eating healthy foods? Probably not, maybe sometimes. But when we are exposed in our environment to all of these processed foods especially, it becomes very, very difficult but doable when you just make that decision to do this for yourself. The first step really is to start saying no to those bad foods, those processed foods that are constantly around you. And you can do it. You can do it. Count your no's, I say. You may be counting your yeses when you allow a treat now and then, which I do. I allow a treat now and then, it gives me a healthy balance in my life. If I'm on vacation or it's my birthday or Andrew's birthday, we will have something off plan occasionally. So you can allow something now and then that is off plan, but I'm talking about on the daily. Count your nose this week. One, one. Yeah, like one, <laughs> one. And my third diet hack for those of us over 40, who like to work smarter, not harder after all these years, so we can keep the weight off, because it's harder to lose, is non-rigorous or moderate exercise. So this is a big, huge, misunderstood topic I have found, especially in the diet community. Now, a lot of the younger folks who have diet channels, for example, or something to sell you, will try to get you to work out like a beast in the gym, CrossFit, and even just doing too much exercise, too heavy weight, and really pushing yourself beyond kind of a comfortable limit is the opposite of what I'm recommending. Now, I am not at my goal weight. I have a muffin middle. I have a muffin top but I also have a muffin middle and I'm working on trying to lose that. I'm 50 years old and it drops off just a bit slower, but I want it to be steady and it has been steady ever since I went on a low carb diet five years ago. So I love a carnivore lifestyle, which includes a mild to moderate exercise regime, if you will. We walk every single day if we can. 
There are some days it rains. There are some days where I should stay home and do yoga, but I'm terrible at yoga. Now, Andrew does yoga better than I do, which is a little more unusual for guys, but he is probably at a level one to two with yoga. Now I'm at a level negative zero when it comes to yoga. I admit it, I do not love yoga. I'm gonna get into it this year, guys. I'm gonna push myself a little bit, not rigorously, but at my comfort level. Because when you tax out your hormones, especially if you're female and you're over 40, we know now that taxing your hormones can really jack you up. And I know this is true, I've done it. So I had to step back and decide Misty, what is best for your comfort level, for your age, for your body style? Because walking for me right now is working out great. I try to walk five days a week if the weather permits. I'm walking uphill and I'm getting in three miles every time I walk. Now, I have not always done it this way. At first, I couldn't even walk a mile without getting out of breath. And that was on a flat surface. So I've come a long way. It is still mild exercise and it is still great for my heart and it is still very, very doable and very comfortable. Now I could stand to lift some heavy weights and I have had bouts of gym memberships over the years and that's great, but I've messed myself up in the gym by being too egotistical about the weight that I wanted to lift and I've torn some muscles and then you have to recover. And when you have to recover, you are not exercising. It's something that I've noticed being over 40 is when I really have to pay attention to how much weight I'm lifting, how much exercise I do that's beyond the scope of what I'm used to. Come in slow if you're going to add weight. Add it very, very slowly and carefully. So we are walking outdoors only. And we got rid of our gym membership because we want as much sunshine and vitamin D as we can get. Walking out in nature, appreciating this world that we live in, looking up at the sky and the clouds and the beautiful sun shining down on you. It's great for you for so many reasons. You'll sleep like a baby especially, and that's something I've noticed lately since we've added a little more distance to our walk is that I sleep a lot more sound, so that's always great. I wanna add a bonus hack here. Talk nice to yourself, and I struggle with this because I feel funny looking in the mirror and saying, I love you, Misty. You are wonderful. You are slim, you are healthy, you are toned, you are smart. And it feels funny when you look in the mirror, but they say it works. And I'm not gonna say I haven't done it even more recently. And it only feels funny at first, and then you can make kind of a joke out of it. It does sink in when you look yourself in the eye in the mirror and talk nice to yourself. But also when you're walking around during the day, are you talking nice to yourself? Are you saying, oh, you're just fat and you just ate too much? Forgive yourself if you have a little treat now and then. You're not a bad person. Get right back on it though, do not throw in the towel and say, well, I already cheated on my diet, so I might as well go all the way and cheat for the rest of the day, the rest of the week, and the rest of your life. Because we get to those appointments at our doctor's office once, twice a year, and the most thing we fear, especially us women, is getting on that scale. Getting on that scale, I've been there. I still hate it. And I think we would almost rather go on medication than step on that scale at the doctor's office. So please talk nice to yourself and know that you are worth it and this is your birthright to be happy, healthy, and fit. We want to thank you for tuning into Love Style today, listening to Black Eyed Soul. That's our music. Andrew and I record right here in this room. Go to blackeyedsoul.com if you want to support the channel. 
or anywhere you find streaming music, we are there. Tell us if you like us. And my truth bomb today is we are over 40 and 50 and 60 and 70 and concerned about our health. So if you are watching this, you have made a step in the right direction to learn a little bit more from somebody that's just the girl next door like me. I'm just a regular working stiff trying to make my way in this world. Why would you listen to me if I'm not an expert? Because I've been there and I am finding so much more happiness in my older years at 50 years old than I think I may have ever been in my life. We are not as young as we used to be and keeping weight off is more of a challenge. Being more focused in on our automatic behaviors, subconscious behaviors with food, alcohol, other addictions, and so forth become harder when you've done them for more years. So becoming more aware of those behaviors can be something that we pay attention to from now on. And it can be done and I can help you. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. I love your comments and interacting with you. Thank you for tuning into Love Style today. We'll see you next time. Peace out.